Over the past three months, I've ditched the MX Master 3 mouse that I've been using and honestly quite enjoying for the past five years for something a little different. This is the Ploopy Mouse, a fully open source and completely customizable 3D printed mouse that runs QMK firmware. Let's take a look. Right off the bat, you don't need to own a 3D printer to enjoy the Ploopy Mouse, though it does add to the experience. Ploopy sells a variety of open source computer peripherals on their website that ship directly from their mini print farm in Toronto, Canada. You can purchase the Ploopy Mouse either completely assembled and ready to go for $130 Canadian, or as a build it your own kit with all of the 3D printed components, PCB, fasteners, and optical sensor for $100. Either way, you can select from a few basic color options for the buttons and body, and you can add a USB-C cable to power the mouse for an extra $5. I opted for the DIY kit, and the assembly was very straightforward. The instructions were hosted on a wiki linked to the mouse's GitHub page, are easy to understand, and are accompanied by plenty of pictures. However, while the mechanical assembly only requires seven self-tapping screws, an important caveat to buying the kit is that you do have to solder the optic sensor onto the PCB with your own equipment. I'm not much of a small electronics repair guy, but I was able to dust off my soldering kit and after two attempts get all of the pins connected properly. Really though, from my experience, you buy the Ploopy Mouse for three reasons. The buttons, customizability, and the ergonomics. The mouse has eight buttons, the standard left and right click, the central scroll click wheel, as well as two more peripheral left and right buttons, a central button above the scroll wheel, and front and back thumb side buttons. All are easily triggered with only the central button above the scroll wheel requiring more of an intentional reach. They're also all driven by 3D printed components with living plastic hinges and sit atop Omron D2LS21 switches, which have a firm and reliable 61 gram force operation point but have a listen for yourself. My only issue is that the back side button is a little softer than the front side button, so I may eventually thicken the printed hinges here to make it a bit firmer. Aside from that, I really like the sound and feel of these buttons, nothing cheap, and the printed components function exceptionally well. Oh yeah, and since the mouse runs QMK firmware, all eight buttons are remappable in VIA. Probably the biggest selling point of the Ploopy Mouse for many people will be that you can remap buttons and add macros using a QMK firmware modifier or VIA, VIA being the simpler option not requiring you to flash any firmware. Once connected, you can use the configure page to remap the mouse buttons across the eight different available layers by simply selecting the button, then clicking on one of the mouse options below. It's worth noting here that most of the mouse relevant buttons can be found under the special section. I'm still tweaking my configuration, but two things to highlight for my Mac setup are my custom macros M1 and M2, which I've mapped to the peripheral left and right buttons to allow me to slide between virtual desktops. This is something I used to have mapped to the gesture button on my MX Master 3, and I find it to be really handy. It's also worth noting that many native Mac apps don't follow the standardized uses of mouse buttons 4 and 5 for triggering back and forward commands, for example, while navigating your browser history in Safari. So I installed a free open source software called Sane Side Buttons, which once enabled allows these commands to function as you'd expect. I'll leave a link to this software in the video description. But in addition to using open source firmware, which many companies do, Ploopy also released the mouse hardware under a CERN OHL strongly reciprocal license, meaning you have access to the PCB documentation and all of the 3D printed components. 
As you probably noticed, my Ploopy mouse doesn't use any of the default colors. In fact, I ordered mine with navy blue buttons and a gold, though honestly yellow, body, but I never ended up assembling it that way. That's because, while it was being shipped, I printed my own tricolor version, featuring a PLA galaxy black top, white faux stone body, and turquoise speckled side buttons and base, all made using the Prusa i3 Mark IV printers. And honestly, I absolutely love the result, but let me know what you think using the comments section. Though the 3D printed layer lines are still visible, especially in a close-up video like this, the speckled PLA does a great job of making them appear a lot less prominent in person, to the point where I don't really notice them while using the mouse. And of course, your hardware modifications don't need to stop at color changes. If you're CAD savvy, like I mentioned before, you can change things like the stiffness of the plastic hinges and other components to better suit your needs. Though, honestly, there aren't a lot of things I want to change about the Ploopy mouse. Overall, the mouse is quite large, measuring in at about 136mm long, 86mm wide, and 43mm tall, which is considerably bigger than the MX Master 3. At first, I was a little surprised just how big it was, but as soon as I grabbed it, that didn't really matter anymore, because the sculpting of the mouse is excellent. There are a lot of little smooth dips and curves around the mouse body that feel really natural and pull my hand into a very comfortable position particularly on the main left and right buttons, as well as around the outside of the mouse body for my ring finger, and of course, the thumb groove. You'll also notice small ledges protruding from beneath the left and right mouse buttons, which act as affordances to allow you to lift the relatively light 109 gram mouse easily while moving the cursor. I will say the 3D printed texture does take a little bit of getting used to, giving the mouse a bit of a grittier feel, particularly on the top buttons. Also, the scroll wheel is a free-floating, optically-driven mechanism, so there isn't any ratcheting sensation, and the smoothness of the scrolling may be initially tighter than expected, depending on how the 3D printed tolerances work out. It's also worth noting that the Ploopy mouse is wired, not wireless, which I've found has taken some getting used to, coming from mostly wireless mice for the past decade but the benefit is that it does pull at 1000 Hertz. It also uses a quality PixArt PMW3360 optic sensor that's capable of being configured up to 12,000 DPI if you dive into the QMK configurator to rewrite the firmware. That said, the company has made the DPI toggle button available under custom actions in VIA to allow you to jump between 1200, 1600, and 2400 DPI settings. Strangely, this DPI toggle is quite noticeable on the Ploopy thumb that I own, but I haven't been able to perceive much of a difference when using it on the Ploopy mouse. All things considered, I'm really enjoying my Ploopy mouse, and while I think it's best experienced if you have access to a 3D printer to allow you to tweak the appearance and troubleshoot the odd component tolerance issues, I'd still recommend it if you don't. The ease and familiarity of using VIA to remap the buttons is awesome and has actually pulled me deeper into exploring QMK functionality than any mechanical keyboard ever has. It isn't as robust as the app-specific button functionality available through Logitech's proprietary software, but I haven't found I've needed it to be. The Bloopy mouse supports up to eight different key maps, and I'm only using two to achieve the navigation and macros that I need. But what do you think? Would the Bloopy mouse fit your workflow, or is there something that's still missing? If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.